What's going on, guys? Coach Matt and you go pro baseball. I'm here with Matt Antonelli, the man. It's been a few years. We're going to talk again. A lot of stuff today. Antonelli baseball on YouTube. Great stuff. First round draft pick. We were teammates in pro ball. A lot of knowledge. And I'm picking his brain today. I want to talk in this video about when parents are trying to select a travel ball organization to yep. play for. You have a travel ball organization. What are some things that parents should look for uh, when they're picking one? Sure. I'll start with this. Travel ball, I think, has gotten kind of a bad rap the last five to 10 years. There's so many travel ball teams all over the place. So I always start when people ask me about travel ball. Um, for me as a kid, travel ball was the best decision that I ever made as a kid. When we chose the team, my dad and I, or my parents and I, um, my dad's philosophy when I was a kid, he said, to be a good player, you've got to play with the best and against the best. So that was our philosophy. So, and I think that helped me a ton playing again, you want to be pushed by good teammates and you want to be pushed by good competition. So I always start there. Now I know today, there's tons of travel ball teams. Back when we were kids, like 20 years ago, 25 years ago, unfortunately, there, there weren't many teams. There was probably like 10 teams in my whole state. Now there's a thousand teams, it feels like, right? So it has changed, but I think the principle still stays the same. You just gotta do your homework more, essentially. So find a team where you're gonna play with really good players, you're gonna play against really good players, and then I also think that you're gonna get playing time is important as well. Um, some players and, and parents now, they just wanna chase who's the best team, who's playing against, you know, who's, who's going to the biggest tournaments, and let's go play for them, which is cool, which that's fine, but make sure that you fit on that team because I don't think any kid wants to go play for a great team and be the 13th player that never gets into the game. So I think that's the, the, the first thing. You gotta be able to do your homework. I think the, the second thing and what I what we try to preach with Anthony Baseball is it's about development first and how do you develop practice. Like we play against a lot of teams. We have a lot of players, we have 200 kids in our program. A lot of kids come from other programs. And when we the first thing I do when I'm when I'm not selling the program, but informing the parents about the program, I start with practice every time. And most programs don't, I feel like. Most programs will go right to the game. Oh, we play, you know, 60 games and we go to all around the country, which is great again, that's fantastic. Um, but there's a lot of programs now, they don't practice. And how do you get better at baseball? You practice, right? Games are great, you have to play in the game because you have to take what you practice and be able to transition it to the game. And that's how you find out, oh, is what I'm practicing helping me? Yeah, that's the test, the game is the test but you gotta practice. So that's the first thing I start with. I said, we've got 30 winter workouts where we're gonna practice every single day. We, we practice throughout the summer. Like we're not just traveling around. So development I think is huge. Make sure the team practices um, if you wanna get better. If you're 10, 11, 12, they, travel team's even younger than that now. If you're gonna play travel ball, it's to have fun, it's to win games obviously. Um, but it's to get better. That's the number one thing. I'm playing to get better. I would think that's the number one thing. At least that's the way we talk about it. I know when I played, it was get better. Have fun and get better. It should be, absolutely. Yeah. Um, when I was coming up, I think I'm a little bit older than you. I'm gonna be 39 this year, so I think I got a I'm couple- 36. Years. Okay, so I got a couple years on you. Yeah. So I only played my junior year of high school, travel ball. I just played rec ball up until then. Yeah. So thinking back on that, and now the landscape that is travel baseball, what, schedule wise, what do you think is a good schedule um, throughout the year? Because I think, at, at least here in Florida, we're in Sarasota, Florida today, yep. Matt's from uh, the Boston area. Yep. So a little bit different because of weather situations, sure. but you got an indoor place. Yep. Year round schedule wise, what are we looking for? So what we do, and as, as you know, probably at least in our area, it's, it feels like every sport has become a year round sport. Right? Again, like, when we were younger, when I was younger, I played basketball, I played football, I played hockey, I played baseball. Baseball was more just a summer thing. Now it's become more of a year-round thing, which again is fine if you love baseball. I think it's great. The more you play, the better you're gonna get. Um, but I think with that being said, there's also some time where you can take some time off. I think a lot of players now are playing 12 months out of the year. There's tournaments going on every single month of the year. And so, again, if you love baseball, that's fine, but I do recommend taking a little bit of a break. So what we do is we start in December 
at least for I think most northern programs probably do. We start in December, we do winter workouts, and then we get outside in the spring, hopefully. Sometimes it's snowing out in April. Um, but we'll get outside in the spring, and then we play through the summer. And then we offer, we offer, we do offer stuff for fall ball. So I think you're trying to make a balance or find a balance of how can I play enough and practice enough that I can get better, which is number one, but also that um, I can have a life, that I can enjoy other things. I think sometimes when it comes to playing, some parents especially, but even some kids, it's like they feel like they have to throw everything else away. Just or if I don't if I don't play 12 months a year, I'm never gonna play in college or I'll never, you know, get drafted or whatever. I mean I played baseball four months out of the year, that was it. And I had a fine career, right? Yeah. So um, I don't think you have to play every single minute of every day, but I do think um, if you want to get better, you've got to obviously play in practice. So just balance those two out. Two things that made me think of. One, you were an amazing athlete. Yeah. Like I think that's why you were drafted so high. You tell me, tell me if I'm wrong. No, yeah. But I think that's why you were drafted so high, just being such a great athlete. So that obviously you had a lot of baseball skill, sure. but your athleticism really, really helped your draft status. In my opinion, he was catching balls that I've never seen anybody catch before. I was a pitcher, he played in the middle infield, and some of the things, I, I would be like, oh, that's a base hit. Turn around and match snagging balls. Like, how the hell did he just do that? That's kind you of know? you. So, uh, so uh, that speaks highly to sure. being an athlete first. My first question is, what do you do for your travel teams? What should parents look for in other travel organizations in the program to build athleticism? So, uh, athleticism, a couple things. I think that um, developing baseball skill, specific skill is important. Um, but if that's all you do, I think you're gonna be missing out on a lot of development. So, especially once you get to be, I would say 13 and up, um, strength training is huge. So I definitely think, and we, and we actually don't have a in-house anti baseball strength training program, but I recommend, we have programs we recommend because I think it's hugely important. I know as a player, um, I got, once I started to work out and train, I got bigger, stronger, faster, threw the ball harder um, than I did before. So I think that's a huge part of it. Find some type of strength and conditioning program that you can get into. I think you'll make huge, huge leaps. Um, with your baseball specific skills. So I think that's really big. Um, and we, do, we just do a lot of stuff. And again, you can do this a bunch of different ways, but we do a lot of stuff where, where we're running, we're sprinting, we're moving side to side. And it's not, it's not so much you know, setting up a ladder, which again, you can set up a ladder and do ladder drills, I think that's fine. Or setting up cones, but I think it's, we try to do a lot of stuff where the player has to make an adjustment or a move on the fly. Right, so getting creative, and there's YouTube again, you can go on YouTube, find tons of drills for this, but where the player doesn't know what he's going to do, and then you put them in a situation where they've got to quickly read a cue, whether it's a point, whether it's a verbal yell, and they've got to move someplace. Because the game of baseball for me is reading the ball and reacting to it, and you have no idea it, it could go in any direction, direction. So I think that's important, adding all that stuff into your program. I remember my second question now. Thank well, you for what? giving me some time to think. You <laughs> talked about the older players, 13 and up. Yeah. How does showcase ball, because yeah. we talked about development um, in the beginning, especially for the younger ages, even these guys, 13 to, to 18. Yep. But let's be honest, it's about, you know, parents think part of the program is to help get my son seen by college. Yeah. How does the showcase part of that play into a, a well-rounded program, travel program? Yeah, I think if you're an older player, high school player essentially I think once you get to high school I definitely think the showcase part of it is a is a definitely a big part I think any player that's a serious baseball player not any player but 90 plus percent of players if they're a serious baseball player and they're playing travel ball they probably want to play in college so if you're a program that's not offering anything with regards to getting recruited I think not a really good program for you. That's one of the things you should be researching if you're a parent and say, you know what, we'll, we'll go someplace else. I'm sure it's a fine program, but this is our goals and we're gonna do that. So if I was gonna talk to you, if you wanted to play on our program, which I think we do a good job with college recruiting, the first thing I start off with is development. We already talked about that. The second thing is we're gonna give you the opportunity to play in front of colleges. I think that's big. You've gotta play in front of, if, if you want them to, to like your skill set, they have to see you. So I think going to the right tournaments, 
going to the right showcases, letting the player know, I think a huge part is giving the player guidance for what is good and what is not good. College camps. College camps are something that most people don't think about. But we talk all the time about going to certain college camps. Find the colleges that you're interested in and go see them. Because the truth is now there's 5,000 tournaments going on in the summer. College can't, coach can't go to every single tournament. So you want to find a team that's going to try to go to the right tournaments, but then you also have to do more outside of that. And you need someone to tell you because, like I said, there's 5,000 tournaments. There's 5,000 showcases. Which ones are the good ones? So I think that's where we can help out. And then the last thing is just informing parents and kids, how does the recruiting process work, right? Most people don't, they have no idea how it works. So we guide them through that. How do you make a target list? Um, how do you communicate with colleges? How do you craft an email? How do you make sure you stay in contact with them? Uh, what school should be, you be looking at? Every kid thinks they're gonna go to play at Vanderbilt. I wanna play at Vanderbilt too, but there's only gonna be eight kids a year that go to Vanderbilt. You know, and there's going to be 80,000 that don't. So we can't all be looking at Vanderbilt. So it's ex explaining the process and saying, okay, I'm going to evaluate you as a player. I think you're a great player. This is where I think you fit best. These are the schools that I think you should be looking at. And then you can attack it. So I think if your program isn't doing, they don't have to do all those things. But if they're not doing some of those things, it's the wrong program. And that's the homework you do. You say, hey, what, what do you provide for us as a player looking to go to college? And do that with a few programs, you pick the one that you think is going to put you in the best situation. Antonelli Baseball in the Boston, Massachusetts area. If you're looking for a travel ball team, the last thing I want to touch on in this video is the scholarship process because I don't know if it's changed since we played. You would have a better pulse on this. Uh, but a lot of parents think that their kid is going to get a full scholarship. Oh, he's going to get a D1 full scholarship. When I was playing, I played JUCO first and then went to Auburn University. I, I thought at least I was a stud and I only got like 30% to go to, to Auburn University. Now I might be shooting myself in the foot. Matt's going to be like, oh yeah, I got 100% scholarship. <laughs> no, I, I don't know. I don't I know. Did. if they, Okay, good. Did you didn't get a full scholarship. Yeah. But most of the time that's not the case, right? No. How does the whole like scholarship yeah, process work? So I'll start with this. What I noticed, what, a lot, what happens a lot is a player will get 60% and they'll start telling people and then someone will hear 60 but they'll forget and they'll say he got 70% and then they'll tell people and then someone says no it was 80% that's what he got and before you know it's 120% scholarship <laughs> which is amazing so uh, that usually does not happen in my experience at Wake Forest I think I got 63% which is considered I would, amazing. I, I would usually say if you're a position player getting over 50%, you're doing pretty damn good. Because right. at the Division One level, they only have 11.7 scholarships. So you got 35 players in a roster. How are you giving out 100% scholarship? It right. doesn't happen. So um, we, I tell every player when we first start, I said, if you're in this because you think you're going to or parents do, if you're in this because you think you're going to get even a scholarship, even any scholarship, you're in it for the wrong. You're you're in it for the wrong reason. The, 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 what you're looking for is to go to a college where you're a great fit, where you can get a great education, where you can play good baseball, you can have fun, you can enjoy your four years. Anything beyond that is icing on the cake. And so it's the same thing with scholarships. It's not going to happen a whole lot. Um, and there's other forms of scholarship. Actually, you know the the easiest way to get a scholarship is academically. So I, I tell them that too. I say, athletic scholarship's great, but let's be honest, if you're gonna get one, 25%, and you're still a really good player. You get any scholarship, you're a really, really, really good player. So how are some other ways we can get scholarship? Athletic, or academic, athletic, but academics are huge. And you, can, and you can take care of that in the classroom. You can put in as much work as you want. Some players just wanna put in the, the baseball work. You gotta put in the academic work. And then some schools can, can stack those on top of each other. So you get a little athletic, and you get a little academic, and all of a sudden you've got a really big shot. Maybe you get the 100%, like you said. Yeah. It's just not all baseball. We have a thing here in Florida. It's called Bright Futures. It's a government thing, and it's based on grades, too. Yeah. So it's not even through the school. You can get academic through the school. Maybe your state has a program where they'll give you some money if you do good in, in school. Um, you've got the athletics. Tie all that together. In, in JUCO, I was actually getting money back because I had so much scholarship, yeah. different different scholarships, that the tuition was overpaid and they would write me a check and that helped me pay for rent and food and right. stuff like that. So, you know, just trying to find as much money as you can is a good yeah. one. Last thing I want to touch on in this video, I said that before, but Keep is going. 
the parent, you know, I think is a misconception too that like what what do I need to do to get a Division I scholarship? And I think people focus on that too much, far too much, instead of saying, let me just be the best baseball player that I can be. The rest of that's gonna work out. Like, how do I get scouts to, I'm sure you see this question all the time. Right. How do I get the scouts to see me? Right. Don't worry about that. Be the best player you can be, and they'll yeah. find you. You know. I totally agree. I get an email every day that says, I'm from a small town, how do I get a school to look at me? How do I get a pro scout to look at me? In my opinion, if you're a good enough player, you will get, they will find you. Um, now there's certain things you can do to help that. And it's so easy now with YouTube, just get a video of yourself and put on YouTube. It's super easy, but I agree. You can put up a thousand videos of yourself on YouTube, but if you can't play, no one's gonna wanna recruit you. The bottom line, it's the first thing and you just said it, you have to be good enough. You have to have a skill set that when you go out and play and a college is there and there's 20 guys on the field, when they look out there, they say, oh, who's that guy right there? But if you just blend in with everybody, right? You can do everything you want as far as emailing, videos, you know, shaking hands, kissing babies, all that <laughs> stuff. Like, it doesn't matter if you're not good enough of a player, then it's really, really hard to convince someone take you because what's a college coach want he wants to win how does he win he gets players that have the skill set that can get on his team and develop and help his team win that's it so if you can provide that great you might get a scholarship if you can't provide that you won't it's pretty easy great great information as always I'm sure we're pushing 20 minutes on this video so I got many more questions we could be here all day in fact we are gonna be here hopefully not all day <laughs> Uh, but um, thank you so much for watching. If you want to learn more, go to Antonelli Baseball. Uh, he's got a great YouTube channel, talks about his pro ball experience college, offers hitting tips. He's also got a hitting program, Developing the Elite Swing. I'll leave a link down below where you can check that out. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video.